Welcome, Pat. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. That's fine. You're very welcome. So if you could just tell us a little bit about your situation before social prescribing. I was um, diagnosed with bowel cancer in August 21. I had my operation, everything went well, and then had the best part of eight months of chemo. And I got my, my all clear in December. Everybody thought I would be absolutely over the moon and everything. And whilst I was happy I was clear of cancer, I wasn't happy in myself. I had lots of worries, is it going to come back? You know, will I ever feel right again? I couldn't shake it off. It was like I was in a bubble. So um, eventually I went to my GP. You know, we had a discussion and I did say that I didn't want to take tablets. But I was quite depressed. I said, I need to get myself out of this. So she suggested social prescribing. I met up with Elena and we had a long discussion and it was very informal. It was nice because there was no judgment, no oohs and ahs or anything like that. It was just it was just nice to be able to offload it with somebody who was not involved. My family and my friends have all been very supportive, but they were involved. And from there she suggested lots of self help things mm -hmm. that we could do. And so, you know, started sort of doing some of the things. I, I, I didn't feel as I was worth anything. I feel I'm worth something now. And I'm so glad that I, I went and met these guys because they are absolutely amazing. And they can turn your life around if you're willing to go and work with them. And I'm in a much better place than I was before. Could you describe some of the, the changes and benefits that you've, you've experienced from social prescribing? It made me feel worthwhile and it gave me the confidence to actually go and do something. Because if somebody had said I would be volunteering or I would be going swimming or I would be going out more or whatever, you know, when I'd just come off of chemo, I'd have told them, you know, this is my life now. Um, and it's not. It's always something better. And in terms of how you felt, I suppose, at, at your low point and then, you know, the difference in terms of how you feel now, how would you describe that change? Well, at my low point, I always looked on the worst, the bad side of it. Um, everything was sort of dark. Although I'm very good at putting on a good face, so when my family or friends were coming round, you know, oh yeah, you know, Pat's okay, but Pat wasn't okay. They'd been through a lot with me. I mean, it doesn't just affect me, it affects the family and everything. So I really didn't want to put any more on them. So I was sort of hiding a lot of it. And I live on my own, so I spent a lot of time on my own, and that's, I think, when you're low, you don't want to go out, you don't want to do anything. Um, now, I try and have something to do every day, just to get me out, get me to do, you know, get me doing something. And um, yeah, it's made me realize that, you know, there is life after what I've been through and probably what a lot, lot of other people are going through. And how is your health now? My health is, I feel it's quite good. Mm -hmm. um, I do get the odd day when I don't feel quite right, but I know how to cope with it now. Yeah. You know, um, I actually, I sort of, I think, well, okay, this is not such a good day. So I'll, you know, I'll get over today and I'll start again tomorrow. And um, yeah, so my health in general, I'm in remission and um, hopefully it continues like that.